welcome back to a penny for your crops homestead this is vlog 14 and today i'm going to be talking about grooming your farm dog or livestock guardian dog as a professional groomer who has groomed many farm dogs i got into the grooming world in 2015 i started as a bather and an intern and i moved my way up from there as i did curriculum and internships i've been grooming for about four years I may not have as much experience as a lot of other groomers, but I have worked under some amazing people that have given me all their tips and tricks. This is my dog, Bambi. She is my farm poodle, and she has hair, not fur. So she doesn't shed. Her hair just continuously grows, and the only amount she sheds would be about how much you shed with your hair. This is Boo. He is a Jack Russell Chewini mix and he has a smooth coat which means he has no undercoat it's just these short little guard hairs. I bathe him about every four months. Bambi gets groomed and bathed probably once a month. This is Romulus, my Anatolian Shepherd. He has a short rough coat which will have some undercoat. I will probably bathe him and groom him about as much as Boo every four months. The first thing you need to know is that getting your puppy to the groom shop, he's, he's a puppy, he's about 12 weeks old now I think, and it is so important to get your puppy to the groom shop. Otherwise you're going to have, especially if it's an LGD, a livestock guardian dog like Romulus, you're going to have a big dog that is terrified and is is growling and biting your groomer and terrified of every aspect of of the groom shop especially if it never leaves the farm call ahead ask if they will you know just brush your dog just trim its nails for a few minutes so it can get used to that environment and being handled by a professional groomer let's talk about my favorite grooming tools metal slicker brush this is for preventative brushing this will not take mats out this is styptic powder, also known as quick stop for if you accidentally quick your toenail, your dog's toenail. This is a matte ripper and this one's my favorite. This is another type of matte ripper. This is a toenail clipper and this is a undercoat rake. But let's start with what you should get done before you bathe your dog. First off, what groomers usually do before you give a bath is ear cleaning. Ear cleaning is super important for every dog, but most especially dogs who have hair. If they have hair on their body and not fur, it means they are going to have hair in their ears just like a little old man. I don't buy any, but a good tool to have is ear powder to put in their ear. You shake a little powder in their ears so that you can better hold on to their ear hair when you pluck it out. And ear plucking, yes, it's uncomfortable. They're not going to like it. They're probably going to scream at you. But it is super important all that hair gets cleaned out of their ear or else all of the gunk from the moisture in their ear will stick to that hair. And you will have an ear infection on your hands, which will definitely be more painful than just a little ear plucking. Make sure also that you do not pluck the hair around their ear. That's more painful than just plucking out their inner ear hairs. All right, so in here is where I get the most hair from. This is in her ear canal. Careful not to pinch your dog's ear with these. You pinch and twist. That's the best way to get it out. You can use your fingers too, but I, I don't like to touch it. It's so gross. A good thing to have is the, the powder I discussed. I don't have any, so that's a bummer. But if you get the powder, it makes it easier for you to grab onto the hair and pull it out, especially with your fingers. So pull all this hair out so that you can make room for the ear to clean itself and get rid of all the nastiness in there. By the way, I've had people tell me that Romulus's cropped ears will give him an ear infection. <laughs> that is a myth and a fallacy. It's That's just not how it is. What causes ear infections is moisture. Bambi's ears are at high, high risk for getting infected because they're long and they're floppy and they have lots of hair on them. 
So moisture will get in there and it will cause fungus to grow. And there you have an ear infection. Boo's ears are a little more likely than Romulus's ears to get infected because they are floppy, but he is still able to raise his ears up and gets all that nice airflow which prevents that ear infection from happening. So let's just clear that up right now. Listen to a groomer. Don't listen to random people on the internet. A few little dirt flakes in Romulus's ear will not cause an ear infection. It's all about airflow, folks. Okay? Okay. And then once you're done with that, you'll take your solution and hold the ear up like this, pour the solution down in it, and then you'll squish it around like this and you'll hear it squish, 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 when you put that solution in there. Any solution is fine. Just go to the store and get the cheapest ear cleaning pet solution that you can find. After you have dumped that solution in their ear, squished it all about, if their ear is still gunky around the outer portions, use a cotton ball to swab it and get all that gunk off. Don't use a q-tip and stick it down in their ear because that could rupture their eardrum just like a human and that is how you clean an ear nail clipping is also something that groomers do before a bath quite honestly it's mostly because the nails could get quicked and you don't want a dog bleeding all over its very nice clean coat so I do it depending on the dog's temperament before the bath. If they have a good temperament, I can do it after the bath. If they have a bad temperament and they're very angry with me already, I'll do it before the bath just so it's already over for the both of us. We don't have to think about it. It should be done about every two weeks if you want the quick, which is the blood supply to your dog's nail, to recede. If you go further than every two weeks, the dog's quick will keep growing further and further out and you will never get a shorter nail. Longer nails can cause pain just to walk on it or the nail could curl around and start stabbing their paw pad. I have seen cases like this and it can happen way faster on certain dogs. It just depends on your specific dog. So what you need to do is watch your dog to make sure those aren't growing into their nail beds and hurting them. Even if they are grown out and they are too long, it can cause the dog's feet to curl back because the nails are pressing against the ground. If your dog is running around on concrete all day, the nails will be shorter. If they're running around on dirt all day like our dogs are, it's not going to wear them down any. So it's still important for you to get your farm dog's nails trimmed. Trimming is very specific to your dog. Different breeds of dogs can have different kinds of nails. Great Pyrenees usually have back dew claws unless they were removed when they were a puppy. They can also have double dew claws in the back, which means they'll have two toes extra, and you will have to make sure that your dog doesn't have those. I've seen dogs come into a groom shop that had dew claws on the back growing into their pop head just simply because their owners didn't know that they had them. So check your dog, know your dog. That's super important. Also know when you are trimming your dog's nails at home, every dog's nails are different. When I was being trained as a groomer through curriculum, they didn't tell me that every dog's nails is different. It's not just because this one dog's toenail is black and this one is clear. It doesn't matter, they can all look different. Some dogs have their quick in the middle of their nail and some will have it along the bottom of their nail. All three of my dogs have different quicks and that look different. There's a little fleshy white dot and I'll show you pictures of it, surrounded by circles and then there's the outside of the nail. It's, it's all about your circles. Some dogs, you can cut them down so, so low and you can even see the quick the little white fleshy part and continue to go without it bleeding. I don't see that a whole lot in groom shops. And then a lot of other dogs, you can quick them just by barely getting to that quick. Some dogs don't feel it when you quick them and won't react at all and they'll just start bleeding. Other dogs will scream and try to bite you. It is all specific to your dog. If you go to a groom shop for a nail trim, it'll probably be 10 to $15 specific to a groom shop, but usually it's five to $10 to get your dog's nails trimmed at a groom shop. Call ahead, make sure they're not busy and, and asking for a nail trim. Nail grinding, they'll grind their, your dog's nails down so they're less rough. 
and it can get down closer to the quick without making it bleed because it's almost cauterizing it. That will be extra, usually about $15, if that's what you want for your dog. Older people that bring their dogs in, they want their nails ground so that if their dog scratches them, it won't tear their delicate skin. Most dogs, especially if you haven't trained them really well, are not going to sit for you like this. If you are determined to do it yourself and you have a dog that is not willing to get its nails trimmed, I would suggest tying it to a post and working on their back feet first so you can gauge their reaction to nail trimming. If they don't like it and they try to bite you and stuff and you don't know how to train a dog, just take it to a groom shop. It's not going to cost you that much. I've been doing Bambi's nails since she was just a tiny little baby. She barely even reacts when I quick her, if I quick her, which does still happen occasionally if her nails get too long. I'm not judging you if you don't clip your dog's nails as often as you should, as long as it's not causing your dog pain. Now let's get into bathing. Bathing is harder than you think it is, especially for a double coated dog or any dog with an undercoat. It is a lot of rinsing, lots and lots of rinsing. So get the dog wet first. Don't get water in their ear. So when you're bathing, you put the dog in the tub and then you start rinsing. Dog's coats like Romulus's coat, even Boo's coat, they're built to repel water because they're dogs and they were meant to be outside, right? The water will just roll right off of them. You have to have a high powered shower and get underneath those top guard hairs. Those top guard hairs are guarding the undercoat from that moisture. So make sure you get it all soaked up, rub them, to make sure that it's getting underneath there. Soak them real, real good. If you don't have the proper facilities to bathe a dog and you have a really big dog or a standard poodle like Bambi, it hurts my back to be down on the floor. Even with a dog as big as Bambi, she's only about 45 to 50 pounds. She's still pretty big to be on the ground, rubbing all of that water into all of her hair because she has a lot of hair, she's really fluffy. It hurts your back. So if that is not something that sounds fun to you, you can go to um, a local tractor supply, a local groom shop sometimes has them, places like that where they have self-bathing rooms. And you can pay, I don't know what the prices are, I think, Last time I heard at one facility, it was about $15 to $20 for an hour where you can just put your dog in their groomer level tub where you can stand up and wash them as comfortably as it gets. And they will often have soaps for you to use and all, all sorts of nice things. So that's a good option if you don't want to be down on your knees washing and bathing your dog in your, your own bathtub. I just use my own bathtub because I'm not at a groom shop at the moment. If I were at a groom shop, I could just bring my dog in, but I can't. So I bathe them in my tub, get them all wet. As far as shampoo goes, groomer grade shampoo at a Petco is hard to find. If you go there, you see these little tiny bottles that cost $15, $20. That is a ripoff. Don't buy those. Okay, go online, buy something like Groomer's Edge or Top Performance brand. Those come in a big gallon jug and it is concentrated. So it'll have a ratio, 15 to one is about the average. And so what I do is I take a shaker bottle for protein shakes and then I, I fill it up with water almost all the way to the top. I leave about that much room and then I fill it up with that much soap. And then I shake it and that is how I get shampoo for my dog. It is really cost effective and it is really good quality shampoo. They have a whole range of things you can choose from. I like to buy whatever smells the best because that means my dog is going to smell the best the longest. I've used Oatmella from Groomer's Edge. I also like 
their Alpha White for white dogs. It's fantastic. Your dog will never look whiter. Top performance, I have seen used in a lot of groom shops. I like it too. Just get whatever you think you will like the smell of. If your dog has sensitive skin, buy the sensitive skin stuff that they have in their lines because otherwise your dog's gonna get a rash and very, very itchy. As far as conditioners go, I don't use them on stuff like Bambi, standard poodles, because you want their hair to stand up and conditioner relaxes their hair. So if they have a nice poofy top knot like Bambi does, it'll kind of like part and flop over and they'll look really funny, like um, Jim Carrey from Ace Ventura. <laughs> and we don't want that. <laughs> conditioner for dogs like Boo or dogs like Romulus is great. It helps repel water after you've rinsed it all out, of course. It makes their coat super shiny and it hydrates their skin. I don't use conditioner simply because I don't want to spend the extra money and my dogs do fine without it. But it is a nice thing to have. A tip for if you use your conditioner, shampoo them first, don't rinse them, and then put the conditioner on or else you're gonna spend twice as long trying to get that conditioner out because it's so oily and slick and it wants to stick to their coat and not come off. And if you leave that conditioner in there, it will attract more dirt when they're dry than it would if you had rinsed your dog well enough and it'll just have the opposite effect. When you rinse your dog, try to get up under there. Um, my tip for if I don't know if there's still shampoo on there, I always rub their belly. I rub their belly, I rub my hands together, and I look for those little tiny white streaks across my hand. That means you haven't rinsed them well enough. Also with farm dogs, they are always running around in the dirt and the poop and all the nastiness, right? If you are rinsing your dog after its first shampoo and there is tons of dirt running down the drain, I am so sorry, but you're gonna have to wash them again. A clean dog is the best kind of dog. In groom shops, if you screw up their haircut, but you wash them really well and they are the cleanest dog you've ever seen, at least you did that right. If your dog is a small dog like Boo or a standard poodle, they will need their anal glands expressed. Ever seen your dog scooting its butt around on the carpet? That's why. They're trying to express their anal gland juice on your floor. I do my dog's anal glands because I'm a professional groomer. I've heard a lot of people say, don't even do it at the groomer, do it at the vet's office. I don't agree with that. I think professional trained groomers with experience are totally capable of expressing your dog's anal glands. There is always a risk of rupture if your dog's anal glands are impacted, which means they've been full and it doesn't want to come out. It's just kind of gotten stuck in there. Then you could cause a rupture and you'd have to get surgery on your dog. That's always a risk. Um, Bambi's anal glands do become impacted sometimes a little bit if I haven't expressed them for a while, but it was nothing too bad that I was afraid I would rupture them. So I don't recommend doing anal glands at home. There are other YouTube videos that will show you how, but I really recommend going to a groomer and getting it done right because there are different kinds of ways to express your dog's anal glands. Drying is the next part. Always towel dry your dog first. Towel drying them will take off some of the moisture so that you can use a blow dryer to get the rest off. Or if you have a sh really short coated dog like Boo, you can just towel dry them a little and let them go and they will air dry. For blow drying your dog, I have tried buying a super cheap and by cheap, I mean $80 dryer from Amazon for blow drying your dog at home. It was not a good experience for me. It might work for, a, you know, a really small dog like Boo, but for a larger dog like Romulus or a very hairy dog like Bambi, it is not going to cut it. It'll be better than a hair blow dryer for humans, but it will not dry them fast enough. You will be standing there for a very long, very, very long time drying them. I caved and bought this guy. K93 groomer tested and approved. 
it's professional grade, it is super high powered, and it's what is used in a lot of groom shops. Usually it's just one long barrel. I bought the double barreled one just because. This has two switches, one, two. If, if you press one, it doesn't matter which one it is, T turn one on and it'll be a lower power stream of air. If you press the second one, then it'll be full power. You use the lower power for dogs that are smaller or more scared, and I'm talking Yorkies. What you wanna do first with this is after you've towel dried your dog, start with this. This is the condenser cone. It shoots out a really fine stream, uh, condensed, concentrated, high-powered stream of air. This is what you want to start out with. This wicks all the water off. You'll see the water flying off of your dog when you use this. And the only thing you need to know about it is depending on how long your dog's hair is, you want to get it closer or further away from your dog. Dogs like Boo, his hair is that short. I can just get it right up against the skin and I go like this. This is my favorite thing to do with this. It gets the water off faster than just going like this or just staying in one spot, moving to the next spot, moving to the next spot. Bambi has longer hair if I haven't shaved her. I always have a long top knot. She always has long ears. For her top knot, I would use this further away from her head. If you get down closer, you will find that her their hair will fold over on itself and get nice and tangled. You don't want that. You're gonna make a bigger job for yourself, especially how long her ears are. I stay about this far away. If I get closer and see it fold in on itself, I bring it back out. This fur is super short right here, so I just right along her hair, right along the skin. After that is done and you can't see any more water flying off of your dog anymore, untwist this, pop it out, and just use this. This is going to have all the nice warm air and it's not going to hit as hard. The warmth builds up because the condenser cone just keeps it from flowing out. So this is where all the warm air is going to come from and this is how you finish your dog's drying up is the warm air. And there you go, you have a, a dry dog. Good girl. Thank you, that's all I wanted to do. Was that so hard? Good girl. When I de-shed a dog, it just means that I use this a lot longer than I normally would. And with dogs that are blowing coat, that is a term for when your dog loses its winter coat or gets its winter coat. It happens twice a year. If you've noticed your dog all of a sudden shedding a whole bunch in the fall or the spring, that's blowing coat. They are just cycling through their coats seasons. I take this and I ignore the thing I just said about staying far away from your dog's coat. You'll see these lighter colored fluffies coming out from under the straighter, more smooth looking hairs and it's just coming out in these big fluffy clumps. Those fluffy clumps, you can get right up to the skin and go like this, and you'll see them tangle up and blow out across the room. And that's something I learned from a groomer who's been doing this for 15 years. And it's worked great for me. It, uh, it does tangle their guard hairs a little bit, but mostly it does more good than it does tangles. The best way to de-shed a dog is to get a rubber curry comb and during the bath rub their coat. That will get some of the fur out and then you can wash them, blow dry them, all that good stuff. And then after the bath, after you've dried them, you can go at it with the curry, the rubber curry comb again. And then you want to use this for de-shedding because it'll pull out that undercoat. Then you can use this. Generally, the places you wanna concentrate on are the neck, and their feathers on the backs of their legs, on their butt. <laughs> a lot of people like to use the Furminator. It is notorious. Everybody uses it. I hate the thing, honestly. First of all, it's kind of dangerous. Like if you go over a bone, especially on their shoulders, it can hurt them. Basically what it does is it plucks the hair out like you it would if you were hand stripping a dog. That's a show dog grooming term, stripping a dog, which is usually done on Jack Russells and Terriers and that kind of thing. Um, but it strips the coat of all that 
that fluff and that hair that wouldn't make the dog look pretty. It's a good finisher. It will make their coat look a little more smooth and sleek with less <laughs> hairs with less hairs sticking out. For brushing, use this, but if your dog is shedding and matting and tangling, I would go through these first. This is for matting. It is called a mat ripper, like I said before. This is my favorite kind. For somebody who's just doing it at home and has never used one of these before, use this kind. It has a curve over the top and the blades on the inside. These are literally blades on the top. You don't want to scrape their skin open and it, it does happen more than you might think it would. So take this, the blades are on the top, lay it flat against your dog's coat and comb towards you. Don't cut their skin open. If you're nervous that you might get one of these, I don't like the way these work as well as those, but it is safer. After you can see when you start to be able to pick them out, like with your fingers, they'll just kind of pop off. Um, use either a comb or if your dog has a big fluffy undercoat, this is my favorite personal tool for that. I don't see a lot of groomers use these, but I really like it. It's kind of like a wide tooth comb and it will rip out the undercoat that is shedding. If you don't have that, this is a comb, a metal toothed comb. Don't buy any with plastic like mine. Mine broke in half because it was just plastic. Buy all metal combs. One side will have wide teeth and one side will have fine teeth. The wide tooth one is what you start with after you've used your mat ripper. Comb it out. If it's really hard to comb out, just face that mat head on and pick it out with the end teeth and then move to this, move back and forth depending on how bad the mat is and what your dog is feeling. With Bambi, after I've picked out her mats, I use this fine tooth comb just to make sure everything is super tangle free. This versus this. This is good as a preventative. This is if you go through their coat once a week or more, you know, you can prevent some of those mats from forming. If it's something really, really fluffy, Great Pyrenees, you know, you'd have to brush, fold the hair back, brush, fold the hair back and work your way all across the whole coat. I think that's really tedious, which is why I like this so much because you can get all the way down to the skin with it in one stroke. So I like this as a preventative and then I also like it for if you've used the mat ripper to pull out all that under hair and the rest of the mats that are left behind. Brush your dog, brush it often. Think of it as self-care for your dog. I don't care if they don't like it. Matting is like if you twirled up a long piece of fur that was nice and tight, like a rope almost, and super glued it to your skin, and then wrapped it around and around and around your arm, and then tried to pull on it. It can cause blood blisters, it can cause the skin to actually tear, and it can cause open sores. Why would you do that to your dog? Always brush your dog. Tie the dog up so it can't bite you if you have to. Put a muzzle on it. It doesn't matter. You need to brush your dog before it gets so bad that it's ripping its skin apart. If you have a dog that's already matted and it's very close to the skin, take it to your groomer. You could rip your dog's skin open. Sometimes a dog is so matted that the only thing you can do is shave it right down to the skin. And even sometimes when you take it to a groomer, it's, it's scary for us because those mats are so close to the skin. We don't want to hurt your dog. Preventative brushing is the most important thing you can do for your dog. Shaving your dog is okay if it has hair, regular hair like Bambi's, like a standard poodle, a Shih Tzu. That's fine because it's just like if we cut our hair, it'll grow back. It won't damage it. If you have something like a Great Pyrenees or even Romulus, even Boo. If I were to shave them, according to your specific dog, it could go bald, it could damage its guard hairs permanently, which means they would never grow back, and your dog would be all undercoat. This is not an okay thing to do unless your dog is severely matted. If you can cut out the mats with scissors, great. That's not going to damage their guard hairs, but if you use 
clippers and shave your dog, you're going to damage your dog's coat permanently. Your dog is going to be cool for a week and then all that stuff will grow back in and you will have a dog that can no longer regulate its own temperature. You will have a dog that gets overheated incredibly quickly. Let nature do its job because dogs that have guard hairs and undercoat, it is designed to keep them cool. That doesn't mean you should have a big fluffy husky in the middle of the desert, but in our climate here in Northern Idaho, it will keep him cool in the summer. I'm not allowed to say this in groom shops because owners would get upset with me, but I can say it here. Don't do that to your dog, it's cruel. Thank you for joining me here at A Penny For Your Crops Homestead. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a like and a subscribe. If you liked this informative vlog, let me know in the comments so I can make more of them. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I can answer them. We will see you on our next video. Bye.